Hey guys, welcome back to Fleet Yard's Mission Briefing. I am Captain Foley. And I am Connor Cummins. Welcome back. Yes, and here at Mission Briefings, well, Fleet Yard's Mission Briefings, there's a lot of sci-fi ships out there, a lot of sci-fi franchises, shows, movies, anime, mm. things like that. And we like to take those sh the ships and cool things that were designed for mm -hmm. those out of context, take them and look at them and see if we can learn more about them if we don't already know a lot about them. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we've only watched the show once or twice, but... You guys out there usually have a lot of information that you like to share in the comments, which really helps us out as well. And eventually, maybe some of these ships mm -hmm. might get a full Fleet Yards episode down the line uh, where we do complete research and whatnot. But, but these we kind of like, like, like it being a first look, kind of yes. fresh take review. And some of us haven't seen the things. I mean, I showed you a lot of ships at the start. You showed me ships. It's just like, what do you think? It's like, uh, I don't know, a fresh, a fresh, set, of, fresh set of eyes. It can be really interesting. And speaking of eyes... Mm -hmm. Let's just go to the first picture. What ship are we looking at today, Samuel? Space Vampire Ship from Life Force. There you go. Perfect description. Life Force is a, uh, a movie that came out in 1985. Um, okay. has Sir Patrick Stewart in it. And it's a, it's a very interesting kind of... Almost a B-movie, but with a... Like a big budget... Okay. It's actually pretty fantastic. Um, I suggest you check it out. Okay. So if we go to the next picture, that's just the, mo the movie poster there. Uh, go to the next picture, you see this ship. Um, what happens is there's a joint American-British uh, uh, shuttle operation. They go to, to Halley's Comet on its closest pass to Earth to do some research. And they find this ship in the comet's tail. Um, it's a long ship. It's 150 miles long is the estimate. Wow. Uh, yeah. Um, and, uh, well, we'll get into what happens a little bit. But it's an interesting looking ship. Here it looks like a thistle almost. It looks or very organic. Um, and uh, Or actually with the green lighting, and it looks like a Klingon ship boom. And there's the head of the Klingon ship. Well, I, I would have said more Borg, <laughs> honestly. Like a very, um, very... Uh, yeah, for me it kind of looks like, you know, in some sci-fi shows they've got little alien parasites that are just little circles with little prongs. Kind of has that sort of organic, very basic bio creature, deadly creature at the back, and then just obviously just like you said, the mm. the stem of something. Mm -hmm. it, it, these sorts of ships, I mean, we often ignore and never ever ever look at the really big ships. Uh, because they're difficult to kind of conceive of. I mean, how do you really think of 100, what do you say, 125 miles? 150 miles, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty hefty distance anywhere, let alone for a ship. And to build that is a level of technology. Not necessarily technology, I mean, the Death Star is pretty hefty and their technology is, mm -hmm. doesn't change in God knows how many years. But how do you, I mean, I'm looking at the details here and obviously it's just plate details, but it's like, well, yeah, but one of those plates are like a mile long, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's like how... Yeah, it's difficult to comprehend. Well, if you go to the if you go to the next picture, this is a shot of the the Churchill, which is the shuttle that the yeah, joint American joint British and American. It's more British. It's a British made film, but it's got America in it, of course. Um, anyway, they have these big solar sails they deploy, deploy from the shuttle. The shuttle itself will be worth looking at at some point, but you can see the sails there, uh, and they so they find the ship in the comet. Right. Right. And uh, they oh. they go aboard. Uh, I don't want to give too much away right away. Yeah, don't, because if you want to watch it. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so it's a huge ship, and I forget whether they activate something. Because um, <laughs> if you go to the next picture, they do go, they do go inside the ship. They find an entranceway, and uh, I, I kind of got to give the plot away a little bit. Cause I, I, mean, I don't feel like we've really even seen the ship yet. It's like, I, I, oh, we'll get a better picture in a second. Yeah. All right, let's go to the next picture. Here, the ship has left the comet's tail and is proceeding towards Earth. Um, you can see it next to the moon. Okay. Um, is that the front? Is the pointy stuff at the front? Yes, that's heading towards Earth. Yes. And as it approaches Earth, if you go to the next picture, it, that front part oh. opens up and deploys like a sail. Well, that's interesting. Yep. On um, huh. the back there, you can see it's kind of... It, look, it looks very organic. Like I said, it looks like a thistle or some kind of weed. Well, is it, is, uh, yeah, it looks like a tree. 
See, it, yeah. it's it's combined with, and it might just be the Englishness uh, of, of who it was made. It looks like a combination of a Harry Potter wand, the middle bit, slash a uh, broom, again Harry Potter, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then like some sort of claw at the at the front, um, and an animal. Huh. Mm-hmm. That's weird. So, so I'm assuming the ship's alive would be my guess. Or fully mm-hmm. organic creature. No, not really. Um, okay. It's just a bio, bio-engineered vessel. They determine. Anyway, the movie's called Life Force for a reason, because there's basically space vampires that come to Earth every hundred years or so. Whenever Haley's comet comes around, they tend to, oh. and they suck they... life energy out of humans to fuel their ship and to keep themselves mm. alive. They there want used to, be... to eat the people. Yeah, there used to be quite a few of these space vampires on board. But when they discover them, there's only three, Ooh. and they take some of them aboard the Churchill to take back to Earth to um, no, research. That's not risky at all. No, it's a great movie. You guys really have to check it out. So next picture, uh, everything seems to be happening. Um, <laughs> it's kind of multiply opening up. It kind of has a Species Eight Four Seven Two vibe, but way more aggressive and kind of like a. This would be a great sort of ultra capital. Uh, carrier ship that hundreds of bio ships could launch from. Um, I don't know if this is in the movie because it's a really odd no, grey I, scale I, picture or black and white picture. Yeah, I believe these are uh, concept drawings uh, for the original ship design. Okay. Um, huh. And the, yeah, it, and it opens up as it starts moving towards Earth. Uh, this yeah. was from part, almost like a collector, an umbrella yeah. opens up, and the back, I think, did does splay apart a little bit. Mm. Um, but again, they don't go into so much detail with it. So yeah, this is kind of a busy shot. Doesn't it? Kind of looks like a thorny tree branch, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so if we go to the next one, uh, here you see simpler. Yeah, yeah. Here's more of it's more of it is deployed, and I believe this is actually at the end of the movie because the middle part is all glowing and blue because mm. it's been charged. It's been charged with these human life essences. Mm. Um, and it takes the ship back, makes it go back to life and heads towards Haley's Comet again and it's getting the tail of the comet to come back around in another 78 hmm. years, whatever it is. Um, and picture number eight is uh, also, or I think it's an artist rendering, of it being charged up. And it's, it's wow. just a very interesting ship. Now, we're going to get into some interior shots in the mm. next one which is really cool this is where they go on board um, well hold on we'll stay on this eight for a second that's a really clear picture of the ship sure uh no it, it's interesting because it, it has very much and again backwards and forwards in time you know i say it looks like this but actually this came way before it has a very uh collector vibe from insurrection mm. uh, kind of i mean one of the original shots i thought looked, looked kind of like a dalek <laughs> weapon mm. hand um, it's very much like a collector vibe, and obviously it's what it's doing. Well, like, oh, definitely a Vija vibe as well. I mean, it's, it's got a whole load of different organic sort of feels to it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But if that's the scale that it is, I mean, those lights aren't like windows, which you normally consider their, you know, crystals absorbing life force or whatever. And kind of what's interesting is it's kind of subtle in this picture, but I'm, I'm thinking this is like a press picture based on the physical miniature, given the quality of it. Uh, if you look at uh, the, the outer wing bits have certainly a skin feel but the inner bits have sort of a, a uh, bone vaguely yeah. bone layout feels like sort of um, well bats wings opening up honestly mm-hmm. yep exactly um, and I think because it's a bioengineered ship a lot of the ship it could be alive as you said because uh, 150 living. miles yeah 150 miles is quite a huge um, ship and when they get on board uh, you can see a lot of the organic nature inside as well. Um, it almost feels like like the aliens from Alien, that kind of um, vibe. And in this picture, we see one of the huge cavernous areas they first enter, and there's these huge bat-like creatures, um, and they're basically desiccated. They're just, you know, they, they, they touch them, they... they turn into dust kind of thing uh this picture this picture here is at the end of the movie but you see what their actual form is like and these are these big bats that were on board the ship uh so i think what happened was a lot of them died because of lack of 
energy. Um, and there's only three survivors when they find the, sh the ship, uh, but they have human form. Uh, but this is what their true form looks like. And this is what they first kind of see on the ship. It's these big, huge uh, bats, essentially. Basically, these creatures created the vampire legend on Earth. They found Earth, uh, came and sucked the life energy out of people, and it got turned into sucking blood, and you know they could turn into huge bats because they're basically aliens. Mm. Well, it's kind of what you think of the whale probe being. It's, it's big whales on the inside. It's like... Yeah. You know, it's kind of like, oh, there's aliens of another species looking similar to Earth creatures of a different kind. Yeah. Huh. If we go to 8C, this is the main chamber where they find three of them in um, cryostate. Huh. Cryo Upside stasis. down on the yeah, ceilings. It, well, it's not in space, but, you know, exactly, visually. Yeah. Um, uh, so there's one female and two males, and they're in, like, um, stasis pods. Huh. Uh, the next picture, you get a closer shot. They they wiggle them loose to take them aboard the Churchill and mm. take them down to Earth, um, where they basically kill a bunch of people and Yay. the ship the ship enters um, Earth's orbit at one point and uh, stations itself where is it above St. Saint Paul's, Saint Paul's Cathedral and this is where the main focus of this energy collection takes place hmm. and it's really cool Patrick Stewart's in it you gotta check it out guys it's a great it, it, movie if you haven't seen it is he one of the astronauts then, or is he like a secondary? No, he's he's a researcher um, mm. on Earth, a scientist that they call is, in. Is this when he had hair, or after he had hair? Uh, he has a little bit of hair, but yeah, he's pretty much bald. Well, I guess in the 80s he'd be doing Star Trek at the same time? No, this was just before Star Trek. This was 85. So. Oh, yes, yeah. That's what I was wondering, because it's, it's like in Dune, I believe he has hair and stuff, and it's like, oh, that's, that's weird. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, he's not uh, in it, he's not in it very long, but he is in the movie. So I mean, it's worth checking out for that alone. But uh, yeah, there's just some interior shots here of the cool chamber. And for a ship that's 150 miles long, they didn't really explore too much of it. I don't think. <laughs> I mean, how could they? Uh, yeah, because they had a limited amount of fuel and stuff to get back to Earth, so they needed to get out of the tail at a certain time and. Well, because I, I mean, a ship of that size, it feels like it would be. I mean, if we go to the last picture, I guess, which is the whole ship again, mm -hmm. if it's a ship of that size, then it would be a species carrying ship, you know, uh, everyone mm -hmm. left of that race. And so you'd have multiple chambers, multiple pods. But the architecture is very, well, very sort of nothing. Like, it's, 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 it doesn't tell you anything about it, really. Uh, and then the internal room stuff is like, well, are each of those brown bits actually a pod? Maybe like a when when one dies, they put the remains in one of those versions of the pod, you know, because there used to be millions and now there's none. Because I mean, 125 miles, millions would be very packed, you know. Yeah. Um, but it'd be weird to think I, there's only like ten or something for a ship that big. Yeah, I seem to remember that the the, the storyline went that they uh, they started this space uh, voyage and they eventually ran out of energy. They stumbled upon Earth. Hmm. And started feeding on the humans, hmm. and they, they needed to build up the life force of, for the ship to, to actually propel itself. So they needed to, they didn't get enough the first couple times, so they kept going back in the comet because it kind of pulled them around. They didn't need to use any energy. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And uh, each time they came near Earth, they would again, this vampire th craze would flare up again because they'd come back to Earth and uh, start collecting energy for their ships so and i believe at the end of the movie they actually get enough energy uh because it's an interesting movie that it's not a good the heroes win kind of thing mm. kind of movie um they get enough energy and they take off again uh mm. and i believe they're fully charged up at that point so anyway it's been so long since i've seen the movie but i used to watch it a lot as a kid um and uh it's really an awesome horror kind of sci-fi movie in the, in the vein of event horizon almost yeah and you're showing me these pictures like the very abstract just the space stuff i'm sure there's stuff on earth and and, mm -hmm. and non less sci-fi bits because the the miniature looks pretty damn good considering you know um mm -hmm. it's the budget went into it but it's uh it's it's a very much earth-based movie i mean they get back to yeah. earth and they when they suck the energy out of people they turn into like desiccated zombies and Ooh. then those people come alive and suck other life force out of other people and it's like through the eye sockets and the mouth it's, it's, oh so it's so it's a one-to-one one -one energy 
uh, transfer. It's not the ship isn't taking the energy. They're sending the, the energy back up to the ship by they, some psychic yeah, thing. Through right above St. Paul's, St. Paul's yeah. Cathedral. They get a lot of people in there at one point, and there's a huge bloodbath. And other, I see all these blue energy beam orbs heading up to the ship. Each one is like one person's life essence kind of thing. Very interesting movie. So it got so as the more the vampires die, the space vampires, it gets less and less effective. Hence why, like the first, I guess the first time was very successful. Second time, the humans rebelled and killed like fifty of them. It's like, oh crap, our energy, <laughs> our energy take has now been cut quite drastically. Now it'll take 80, 80 more times. Like, oh, God damn it. Yeah, mm. um, but uh, yeah, great movie, and I suggest you guys check it out if you have checked it out. I want you to tell me in the comments, but what do you, what do you think of the ship final? Do you want to see the movie? Yeah, I mean, I yeah, I'm interested to see. Obviously, you set me up with more of a sci-fi expectation. Than I think it is, uh, y- you know. Well, if it could, starts with aliens and yeah. I, I think it's sci-fi. Because uh, I'm imagining, you know, like Event Horizon recently, it's like it's, it's walking around the ship and and learning about them, but it's it's probably not so much about that. Um, yeah, it's cool. It, it's it's interesting to see that it open up and. It's it's difficult to comprehend, but it's very much a, I get very much a Vija vibe. Um, yeah, it's it's weird. Yeah, I kind of get a species eight four seven two vibe from yeah. it. Um, but this came first, you know. So, mm-hmm. but it makes you wonder, you know, what? How many people were meant to live on that ship? Is it a generational ship? Yeah. Is it, you know, what do they do in their spare time? Obviously, if if they're flying creatures, really, then. They need extra space because you can't have you know six foot ceilings and make that kind of pointless. It's like I when talking about the the transformer ship. It's like, well, no, the the, the ceilings have got to be you know yeah. eighty foot tall because they're big robots. You know, it's a whole different style of ship and no air oxygen, no you know gravity or anything like that. Uh, hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, guys, this was a great memory from my childhood, mm-hmm. and. Uh, I do have it downloaded. Me and Sylvia have meant to watch it, and mm. we just haven't got around to it lately. But um, I really wanted to take a look at the ship in a little bit more detail and kind of. Because I'm I'm looking at picture eight. And I'd love to see it sort of scaled down to something you know you can really relate to, mm-hmm. um, and add something to the front. Or I guess the back. There's things you could do to this that, that to use the same sort of shape and idea in a modern context. I think it would be very interesting to see. The fact that it uncoils, if you do that in CG, like like wings, and then they pulse with energy, and yeah, it'd be pretty interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So anyway, there you go. Okay. A bioengineered space vampire ship. How cool is that? Yeah. <laughs> Let me know in the comments. Have you watched the movie? Do you want to watch the movie? Because you should. If you're a Patrick Stewart fan, you got to check it out at least. Who isn't? And it, it is British made, so it's not, you know, the best quality. I'm just kidding. Look at the look on his face. I mean, it's pretty good. It's a, it's a, it's a good movie. I really enjoyed it. So anyways, let me know in the comments below if you've seen it, you want to see it, and let me know what you think of the ship. If you do know more mm-hmm. about it, let me know also as well. Uh, let us know, mm-hmm. not me, us, because there's two of us. And also, don't forget to hit the like button, uh, share this video around, subscribe to the channel. And uh, check out all the Fleet Yards science fiction ships we do, plus all the Trek, yes. Star Trek stuff, which is our main bread and butter as well. And if you want to support this show and all the fun things we do and look at and have this great old, I mean, certainly for me, the first reaction, first review, and I've, you can learn a lot of cool things if you haven't seen the show and the movie, uh, then support us on Patreon, a monthly adjacent service. You give a little bit each every month, and it helps us keep the lights on and continue this show coming to you every single week or a uh, trekkers.com, do a direct donation to our PayPal. This has a joint account. We do full expenses that the show has, buy a new kit and doing trips and such. It's all part of the great wheel that keeps on turning that is called Trek Yard slash Fleet Yards. If you can support us, please do. And if not, just share uh, the show around. And we think people will enjoy it. And so until next week, just, you know, tune in. And, and uh, here's Captain Foley, a still human, non-vampiric, non-space alien. I think, think we're all still pretty vanilla here. And he's Ooh. Commander Cockings, the, the the British space vampire, life sucking, evil entity, also known as just being British. British. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys.